Hey, welcome back to the channel. And on today's video, we're gonna start uh, on the body work of a vintage Honda 500cc race bike. Stay tuned. <laughs> So like I said, uh, today we're going to start work on uh, this uh, Honda 500 uh, vintage race bike. Uh, I have the fuel tank, a front fender, front fairing, and the tail section to do. And uh, I figured I'd start off just by showing you um, the fuel tank. And so this bike has apparently quite a bit of history. It was raced uh, extensively down in the United States. And uh, my buddy who I'm doing the, uh, the paint work for wanted, uh, as, wanted the paint to be exactly the same as it is currently. So the, the white and the blue with a gold pinstripe, it kind of wants to keep the, uh, the originality of the, of the paint scheme. Uh, potentially move this Honda wing uh, further forward because he thinks it's a little bit too far back. We'll, uh, we'll kind of confirm that as we get further into the project. And then the other the other interesting thing is this bike has been signed by Freddie Spencer. And so the the sad part is that uh, after the signature was applied to the tank a number of years ago, uh, it wasn't clear coated over. So uh, when the race fuel was put in the tank, uh, a couple of times it spilt. So you can see this part of the signature that's kind of uh, washed away with the with the race fuel. Uh, especially up in the top area up here and uh, <clears throat> I was asked whether or not it would be possible for me to you know fix that uh, signature uh, like re redo it with the with the gold sharpie just to fill it back in um, or whether it could be saved at all when we repaint the tank and so my my thought on it is um, and I've discussed this with uh, with my buddy who I'm doing the tank for, and, and I think we're in agreement that uh, first and foremost, I think it would be a mistake uh, for me to uh, try to correct this because as soon as somebody else starts to fill in the missing parts, then it becomes a non-original uh, signature. I don't know what the value of this is uh, as it sits, but if I was to start touching this and modifying it, then it just becomes a reproduction. The, the value, if there is any, would be would be lost. And so I think that's the, the fir my first concern was, I don't think I should touch that. Uh, if it's to be preserved, then we preserve it as it is. So Freddie signed it and, you know, over the years with uh, fuel getting spilt as a bike was continually raced, uh, you know, a bit washed off. It's part of the story uh, and I think best left uh, as it is. And as far as, you know, can we repaint the tank <clears throat> and preserve the signature? I think so. You know, the condition of the tank it looks to be in uh, in pretty good shape i don't see any uh, any dents uh, cool. so i'm not anticipating too much in the way of dent repair or anything like that it's just going to be sanding it down and probably the part that'll take the, the most time is just kind of taking care of this area and preserving that so all right so here's uh here's the front fender um it's just uh it's got quite a bit of uh aluminum custom aluminum bracing on the inside of it there um, I think the only thing that we're going to do differently with this is so that it I think the, the issue is uh, this has been repainted a number of times and where it was originally gold pinstriping it's just been painted over so that's what that was so we're gonna try to make sure that that uh, fender matches uh, the tank the uh, the seat unit is here it's fairly uh, straightforward I guess we'll uh, probably end up leaving that foam on there. We'll just uh, tape that up. And then the, uh, the, the main upper fairing is a typical. This, this is going to need uh, a little bit of work. You can see here uh, there's quite a bit of uh, rash on that. So we'll have to clean that up. Uh, uh, this is all fiberglass, so uh, that'll have to be fixed. But, uh, I mean, it's not all smashed, it just has some rash on it. And then the other thing that uh, we'll probably end up doing is uh, my buddy would really like to preserve uh, all of these numbers and decals on the front. So I think these were from the various racetracks where it was raced, uh, all of these uh, stickers. 
So my uh, my intention there would be to, to try to peel all these off individually, uh, intact, uh, same with this. Um, we'll take photographs of the front of it. Uh, we're gonna get reproductions of all these made, reproduction numbers, all of this stuff will be reproduced and we're gonna stick it all back on the bike exactly as it is here to preserve, um, although it won't be original, it'll be kind of as it was raised, it'll look like it did back in the day. So uh, this is the name on the windshield, so I'm, I'm presuming this is the gentleman that used to own and race uh, this bike uh, before my, uh, my buddy got it. All the stickers on here. I don't know what the FP means. If you know, uh, add a comment below. Uh, I'm sure it's just some sort of a... Maybe it's when you pass inspection or something at a track and you get the uh, get the sticker to show that you've you're passed to race or something. I don't know. And then there's some sort of a vintage uh, racing sticker here. What does that say on it? So uh, what I'm doing here, you might have seen me do this uh, on some of the other uh, projects where I create a, a template of the paint lines so I can accurately reproduce them. So uh, because my job here is to replicate the same colors, the same shapes and whatnot, um, I needed to lay out a stencil, a template for uh, the where the top of the tank is painted blue. So I basically just taped all of that up and now I'm in the process of I'll peel that tape up and then I'll tape on the back side so there's no sticky side left. And then also I'll have to create a a template for the uh, white uh, on the upper fairing as well just to make sure I get those paint lines uh, correct as well. So the uh, the paint's just peeling off this uh, fairing in in sheets. I started to use a, uh, a razor blade to remove the decals and uh, yeah the paint's just, just coming off in ribbons so I, my guess is that uh, the primer coat was not sanded before they put the color coat on. So it's actually, uh, I mean, it's taken me 10 minutes to peel the paint off this fairing. The paint's coming off easier than the decals came off, um, which, I mean, the the plus side, though, it makes paint removal easy. But the part that worries me is part of my objective here is to preserve that signature. And if this tank was painted in the same way as that upper fairing, and the paint starts coming off in huge sheets. Um, that's a bit of a worry. I'm going to have to be exceptionally careful. Um, I mean, I don't want to leave paint on here that's not adhered well to the primer underneath. Um, so maybe I can peel most of it, but once I get close to here, I'm going to have to kind of sand and feather all these edges off. So here on the tank, we have the same sort of issue. You should not be able to just peel paint off by hand, which is crazy. I think my only my only hope here, and you can kind of see, um, I think what maybe happened is somebody painted uh, this lower section at some point and didn't paint the top or didn't paint it as as much because the the, the primer seems to kind of be blown over. Um, so, in order to preserve the Freddie Spencer signature, uh, yeah, I'm just going to have to make sure I leave enough room to, to kind of feather this back. Of course, the, this, the problem is like where the, uh, the pinstriping is. I got to be careful here, but uh, yeah, not ideal. So, what I've elected to do here. Uh, let me kind of explain what I've got going on. So uh, underneath the masking tape is the Freddie Spencer signature that I'm desperately trying to preserve. Um, now, fortunately, um, the further I got onto the blue, the better the paint stuck. I mean, I could still peel it off with the razor blade without any real difficulty, but it stuck better here than it did here, largely because most of the primer was on the sides uh, where the white was. Um, and so like in here where there really wasn't much primer around here, the paint stuck 
uh, better, but I could still peel it off. Um, so what I did was I tried to take off what I'll call the loosest paint uh, while not getting um, into the signature area. There's a couple of places where I got really, really close just because the paint was just lifting off. Uh, but by and large, so far, the entire signature is intact under this tape. So then my challenge became, uh, so now you've got a ridge, a hard line, where I've shaved off what was pretty thick paint and clear coat, uh, and then the stuff that hasn't been shaved. This is the original stuff here, uh, the original top clear coat. So there was a bit of a step. So I took, I took the sander, and I tried to feather down the edges, which, again, kind of, I was semi-successful in that. The other edges did feather back, but as you probably know, with on the top here, you've got real hard clear coat. And then right after where the paint was shaved off, you've got softer base coat. So as, as I'm sanding and trying to feather this, the, the base coat will sand down much faster than the clear coat will because it's it's much harder so inevitably although it's feathered to some degree you're going to get a bit of a, a rise so you kind of you're, you've got your old base coat sanded and then you got this lift a discernible visible lift or step even though it's feathered you're going to get that uh when you get into the area where the signature is so uh that that was worrying me um i could not live with with that because it was just gonna look bad. Um, it was just not gonna look right. It would be too obvious that that had been kind of, you know, salvaged or saved or whatnot. Uh, so here's what I elected to do is I've, I've started to put on a very, very, very thin coat of filler around that area to help me blend and feather from the, what is the, the, the top coat, clear coat here where the signature is back down to the the underlying base coat that has no clear on it. So trying to build, instead of kind of sanding my tra transition into the old finish, which I can't do because the signature's there, I'm actually gonna build the transition back and then I'm gonna sand it smooth and then try to build that kind of feathering out from there. Um, the other thing that, that I'm hoping that will do for me is because this paint was so poorly adhered uh, to the substrate, which was, you know, is also a, a repaint under here. Uh, I'm hoping that by putting on the filler, it's also going to prevent any possibility of lifting of the edges of this paint. So I uh, came up with a plan. Um, I consulted with my buddy, who's the professional painter, about uh, how to how to deal with this and whether my plan, uh, as far as putting the filler on here, was uh, was a good way to go. And he he thought that it was a good step. And the other thing that we're going to do here with this to try to make sure we preserve the signature that's under here is what I'm going to do next is I'm going to finish sanding everything uh, and then I'm going to prime the tank. Um, I'm, I'm going to put some additional masking on here and, and back mask it so I don't get a hard uh, primer line here so I'll kind of bring it out as far as I can uh, and kind of back mask it so it's a bit more of a softer edge. Prime the whole thing, sand the primer and then I'm going to peel off this uh, masking here to reveal uh, the signature. Um, I'm going to use a very fine scotch bright. apparently um, there's a gold scotch bright that's kind of a I don't know, I want to say it, maybe it's the equivalent of a 2000 grit, I'm told. Um, I'm going to work in a very, very small amount in between uh, the signature letters, the aware there's no gold Sharpie, so in between, so I get good adhesion. Um, and then I'm going to clear coat the whole top of the tank. Um, you know, focusing on, on this area here. And then the clear coat um, will do two things for me. It's going to provide an additional build here so I can sand it back and get a, uh, an even better transition than I have with the filler. And then it also provides protection for the 
uh, signature. So when I actually come to f uh, finish paint it, uh, if I do for any reason get any uh, you know, blow by on it, or the other thing I'm considering is using my uh, my airbrush to to kind of do some detail work inside to make sure I get color matches. Um, if I end up getting if it's clear coated, uh, and I end up getting a little bit of uh, you know blue um, over top, it's easy to wet sand that off and the signature uh, is still underneath the clear coat. So uh, yeah, basically prime it, sand it, clear coat the top of the tank, wait a few days for that to dry, sand the clear coat, um, so that, you know, with 600 wet, uh, and then further kind of feather this out till I'm happy. And then I can uh, set about doing uh, any detail painting and can probably mask up the actual gold itself with some fine line tape and just kind of blow in. So we've got the uh, tank all uh, primed up, uh, did a bunch of uh, kind of blending and whatnot. So I've just taken the uh, the masking tape off the signature area. So uh, yeah, the uh, this is the right against here was where the, the tape line was basically right there. Uh, when I say tape line, I really mean uh, pinstriping. Um, so it was awfully, awfully close. So. I'm gonna to have to kind of work these edges. I got them as soft as I could, but there's still a couple of hard edges along here. You can see um, that's still pretty hard. So I'm gonna I'm gonna sand all of these edges, uh, feather these uh, primer edges back. So there's uh, two coats of clear on the on the tank. So basically, that's now protected that signature. Uh, I sanded with uh, like a gold scotch white in between all of the signature area and then wiped all of that area down with uh, glass cleaner because I, I was not able to use a solvent product of any sort before I uh, before I painted it and so uh, I've got a little bit of clear left on the gun so when this finishes flashing off I'm going to do one more coat on the top uh, and that'll give me lots of uh, lots of clear to use to uh, to level it and to, uh, to protect that signature so on the uh, on the upper fairing right here, uh, generally speaking, it's in pretty pretty good shape. Um, not too many issues with it at all. There's some spider cracking up here, which is not unusual by some of these mounting points. Um, and then on both sides, right here, the fiberglass you can kind of see it was delaminating here, just kind of splitting apart. You can actually see it better from this angle, I guess. So it starts there, and delams all the way down, but. Uh, I put uh, crazy glue in this, really thin super glue, and it, uh, same as at the top here, right there. So it's general purpose, it's just basically a thin super glue. And then they give you uh, a bunch of these really small applicator needles. There's two of them stuck together there, but you get the idea. So I've just finished wet sanding. So now what I'm going to do, I've basically wiped everything off with uh, alcohol. And the next step before I head to uh, the paint booth to do the like the full paint job on it, um, I need to blend in the new color uh, in and around the signature as much as I can. So, um, uh, But to make sure that the transition doesn't look too obvious, I think the best thing to do is I'm going to tape off with some fine line tape on uh, the gold part of the signature as best I can. And then I'm gonna use my little airbrush and I'm gonna blow in uh, the color, the new color, kind of in all these areas in and around the signature. And then uh, that way when I start painting the uh, the full blue, um, there'll be a, a bit much better, much, uh, much better blend. It won't be kind of a harsh, uh, you know, one color here, one color here. Ready in orange. So I've got the uh, signature taped up with uh, fine line tape. Now I'll get the little airbrush out and uh, we'll, uh, we'll see how we can blow some color in and around there, see how it looks. The idea is I want it to be uh, 
more the new color the further away from the signature I get and then uh, just kind of lightly blow in the color in and around the signature so I don't leave any sort of hard tape lines. I'm just peeling off the uh, masking tape here, the fine line tape. Get the, uh, see how my signature made out, or how Freddie's signature made out. I'm going to have to scuff this up anyway, which I was planning on doing. So that will give me the opportunity to use a very fine scotch bright on here just to smooth everything back, make sure the clear coat is going to stick to it. And it will also allow me to deal with any hard edges um, on, the, on the paint. So, so there we are, Freddie Spencer's signature is still fully intact. And as I said, I'm just going to, I'm lightly going to go around everything now and just kind of smooth out all of the, the paint lines. Plus I have to lightly scuff the whole thing again anyway. So, uh, yeah, and I, and I watch these videos back as I edit them and it, I go, geez, it almost sounds like I know what I'm talking about. But the truth is I'm just making most of this stuff up as I go along and hoping that it works in the end. So we'll see. So I'm just preparing to uh, get everything ready to go to the paint booth. So uh, what I've done is I've retaped the signature again. Because um, at this point I'm really quite unsure as to how I'm going to proceed uh, with painting this tank. Because the, the dilemma that I've got is normally um, I'll post a picture maybe into the video here as to what the tank looked like before. Normally what, what I would do if I was repainting this tank is you would just paint the tank white or, you know, you don't worry about, you know, getting white paint up over here at all. You just kind of paint everything white till you get good coverage where you wait for that to dry long enough and then you tape the white off and you paint the blue. However, in this particular case, um, the issue that I have is if I, if I paint the white, if I just start spraying white here, I'm going to get white all over this. And that creates a problem for me uh, in two ways. One is I don't want to have to wet sand this whole thing again in the booth because I've already got the blue paint on here. So I don't want to sand through that. I don't want to be dealing with overspray onto this area uh, while I'm painting. Um, the other part of the issue is if I, you know, if I create a template like I've done here and I just put a, and I say, let's say I mask that and I'm just using this for demonstration purposes. I mask that off. And then I paint the white. Well, then I've then I've still got issues because now I've got the white paint right up to here, which again normally isn't a problem, but in this case now I've created myself a hard tape line. So there's going to be a ridge there where the white paint ends. Uh, so I think what I'm going to try to do is I'll I'll still I'm going to create a a masking template of a different kind of paper, not this paper, but a proper masking paper when I get to the paint booth. I'll mask that off, but I'm going to use around the edge um, a foam tape, which kind of has a rounded profile to it. So I'm, I'm hoping that I can get close enough to the edge of the signature with the paint but not in a way that creates a hard paint edge. So I'm hoping that that rounded foam tape uh, will do that for me. I've never used it before, so I'm really not too sure what to expect with it. All right, so there's a top masked off with the, uh, the foam tape, so hopefully that'll give me a softer paint line. There's a couple of coats of white. been having to push this uh, back down on here because it just, uh, I don't know, it's just because of the, I guess I've got it curved around here so it just kind of wants to roll up on me. But, uh, <clears throat> that's okay, we'll work, we'll work around that. I'm gonna do one more coat. There's a couple of spots where it, I need to get it to cover just a little bit better uh, up here and down there. Probably could have uh, gone a little heavier there. And also back in over here a little bit. All right, we're all taped up and ready for the blue. 
Uh, I had a bit of a problem here with the uh, the old finish had to do some impromptu work on it uh, right here in the booth. Uh, everything is being taped up. Everything has been taped up. I have to come back in. That's not sticking down there, but. I'm ready to go shortly. All right, the blue's done. So I'm gonna give that uh, a little bit of time before I, uh, before I peel the masking tape off and see how that worked out. This, um, the foam tape, well, I just started refusing to stick down, so I ended up just taking it off because it was starting to flutter and bang around when the, the air from the gun would hit it. So, uh, yeah, I just have to peel off the the tape that I covered the signature with and see how it looks underneath. I'm sure it'll be fine. So yeah, we'll see how it goes. There we go, two coats are clear. And we're all done for the day. Turned out pretty well. I just gotta get the uh, pinstripes and the decals on. And then uh, we'll come back and re-clear the, the tank. So take Freddy's signature. Looks okay. I think by the time uh, I sand all that tank down again and uh, it gets two more coats of clear, it's going to look just perfect. So wet sanded the uh, the entire tank with uh, 600, so 600 wet. Um, so obviously everything has been flatted back. There's no orange peel anywhere. It's pretty smooth to begin with. Um, but I've also made sure that uh, you, you don't really want to feel any of the transition lines between um, the blue and the, the white. So I'm trying to get those as smooth as I can. So when I put the, the, the tape line on here, the pinstriping that kind of lays down real nice. Uh, and similarly up here, like blocking all this back, with the, I mean, there's lots of clear on here. So again, I'm trying to make sure that I don't really feel any any hard paint lines where I had to tape off the signature to blow the blue in. So uh, that's almost where I want it to be. Need a little bit more work, and there's a couple of little spots here. You can see where it's still, see, see where it's shiny there? I'm gonna get rid of all that. Don't want any shiny stuff left. So there uh, is the uh, gold pinstriping on. So that went on real nice, and there is the on the wing decal. Now originally this decal was here, approximately here. So I've moved it, I don't know, probably three or four inches forward, uh, which it looks a lot better there. It was too far back before. Um, and that's uh, my buddy also uh, was of the opinion that it was too far back and uh, wanted it moved forward. So I think we're good. Um, all this this gold pinstriping it's uh it went on quite nicely so that's all now ready to be clear coated there is the front fender so it looks uh it looks good the striping is on so there's the uh the upper fairing and the numbers and these what i believe are inspection stickers uh and the uh the American Historic Motorcycle Association uh, sticker. All these have been very accurately reproduced and have been put back on in absolutely exactly the same place that they were originally. Um, these have been placed uh, and stuck over one another in the same sequence that they were before. So first uh, the two reds and the yellow and the green and the yellow and the orange. So same position, same offsets, et cetera, et cetera. Similarly with this uh, and the numbers. So uh, I've tried to be as faithful uh, to this uh, restoration as I could so that uh, this bike appears uh, exactly as it was raced uh, and inspected and all of that kind of good stuff. So super, super happy with how this has turned out. All right, so we've got two coats of clear on over top of the decals, and I've got a couple of runs i got to fix in it. Like I was either a little too close or a little too slow, and uh, the gun passed, so there's a little one there. There's a couple down underneath this Honda logo, and uh, I've got uh, a series of them up here as well, so. But everything else looks, looks pretty good. 
plenty of uh, plenty of shine on it. So, all right, it is the next morning. I'm back to pick up the tank. I've spent uh, most of the last 12 hours beating myself up for overloading this with uh, with clear coat. So, um, you know, live and learn, right? Um, I guess the thing is this, you know, I've been doing this more and more. It's gotta be my, I don't know, 15th, 17th, 20th paint job, I don't know. First time I've ever got runs in clear coat. First time ever. And, uh, I mean, it's inevitable that it would happen sooner or later, I guess, but, uh, you know, when you think you're getting better, and I guess generally I am, but, yeah, it upsets me. I mean, it's all fixable, you know. Sand it down a little bit and buff it up and it'll all be good, but still. But yeah, still disappointed in myself for the runs, but hey. Let's get her home, leave her a couple of days, and then uh, we'll get it wet, sanded, and buffed, and it'll look perfect. All right, so uh, it's been four days, and uh, I'm going to see if I can deal with some of the runs in the tank. So, as you uh, as you know, this is not an exp I'm not speaking here from a point of great experience. Um, so I'm kind of really doing this for the first time. So there's and if you see I run the light across here, you can see there's a a run right there in the clear. There's a, there's a couple there you see where the light passing over so basically right underneath the honda which i've taped off there's a bunch of runs there because i got a little too uh a little too exuberant with the clear coat and so while the rest of the tank is like shiny glass there's a couple there's a series here which i just showed you there's one slight very slight sag in the clear coat right here where my finger is so I'm going to take care of that one. And then there's uh, a couple on the other side. Now what I'm going to use, and again, I'm not speaking from great experience here, but uh, from my buddy who's the painter, who's basically said that he would take a couple of runs on a tank like this over the, you know, the whole tank being kind of orange peely uh, any day of the week. He said the uh, runs are way easier to fix. So, I'm going to take his word for that. And so I've got a sheet of 2000 wet and dry and a sheet of 3000 wet and dry. And I've also uh, got a razor blade here. And I've never tried this before. It's kind of scary. But uh, on the ones where the, the tank is kind of uh, convexed, I'm going to also maybe try the razor blade on any of the larger ones. This one is a bit of a sag. I'm not going to use a razor blade here. But on this part and on the other side, uh, I'm going to try the razor blade just to kind of scrape any of the uh, excess clear coat off. If it's convexed, um, I don't think the uh, the razor blade is a way to go because just the shape of it, it's gonna, it's not really going to make contact with the part of the run that I need. So I'm going to try that on a couple, and then once I've scraped off any of the larger uh, amounts of clear that I need to remove off the runs area, I'm going to uh, go to the 2000 and the 3000. I'm using it wet my squirt bottle and then once i'm happy that it's kind of down to the point where the run has disappeared then uh, i will be using my buffer and i'll be using this which is the uh paste compound like a buffing compound stage one cut i've used this before and uh, when I've taken uh, my experience with this is limited to kind of taking a, like a, the odd speck of dust out um, and it's worked quite well but this is kind of larger scale for for me so I put uh, tape oh so it's got an H O N D A under here Honda so I put some tape over that so I can't inadvertently uh, rub through any clear coat to the vinyl underneath of the decal same here i just make sure that i've got some tape over the uh the pinstriping i'm just trying to protect things that i know i don't need to be touching so so it has been about uh four days since I clear coated this so everything is kind of hardened up pretty well so 
I'm just focusing on the areas that have got like a little nib. You can buy uh, paint files for this sort of stuff. But they want like 40 bucks Canadian for one on Amazon, so. Now you don't want to do this uh, like the day after because the, the clear coat is still quite soft for a day or two. And then you just end up making a mess of it. So you got to wait for this stuff to, to really cure and harden up before you, you take a razor blade or sandpaper to it. All right, so I did a little bit of scraping there, just as much as I was comfortable in doing, I guess. So I don't want to go overboard and scrape in the wrong places or anything. So now I'm moving on to my 3000, and I've got a, uh, I've got a little rubber squeegee type thing. So I'm going to wrap that in uh, the 3000, and then wet the area a little bit that I want to sand, and then start And I'm just going to use my my finger just to feel how things are going. Yeah, that's coming really good. So now I'm going to move on on that spot to some uh, 3000. And this is the 3000 now. I'm actually finding I prefer using my uh, my finger on this because I can actually feel through the paper uh, where the uh, where the run is, and I can feel it getting flatter and removed bit by bit. So it's actually a, a bit more confidence inspiring to know that uh, you're kind of standing in the right spot. All right, so I'll see if I can uh, show you these guys see right there there's about there's a whole slew of them right right up here in this area here if I hold the light at just the right angle it'll it'll pick them up so those are all the ones I got to get rid of so this one's gonna be a little harder to see the way that I have my bench set up here but uh, all the runs are in this area. The only reason I put the tape on in this particular case is just to kind of guide me as to where the runs are. I just find it very hard to see them uh, in this light. So uh, I just put that on just to give me a bit more, a bit more guidance. All right, so uh, this is the last one. Easier to see because it's on the uh, dark blue paint it's right there. It's kind of a bit of a sag in the clear coat. So this one, uh, got these out. I haven't polished it yet, but they're all sanded down. Just going to get this fairly easy here. I don't want to be burning the paint. So I'm just trying to go at this as easily as I can with the, uh, I'm using the smaller air powered uh, DA just because the uh, the big one um, kind of takes two hands to use it, the electric one. And when you've only got you know, two hands, it uh, you kind of, a small item like a fuel tank or something like that, you kind of really need to have somebody holding it. Whereas if I use this uh, handheld guy with the, you know, the foam tip on it, um, it's, uh, it's much easier to control. Um, I've got, I did wet the, uh, I wet the foam a little bit and then just put a couple of dabs of the uh, buffing compound on there. And uh, so far it's starting to come reasonably good here. So here on the, uh, you can see where I sanded uh, the run out of the, uh, of the paint there. It's kind of got that dull spot from the sanding. So. Uh, this will probably be the easiest spot to see uh, how this buffs back up. So let's take a look how that's going to work. I wasn't entirely happy with the uh, the way the air DA was was doing uh, using the foam pad. So I've kind of switched back to my rather large and clunky uh, electric 
D, well, it's not a DA, it's just a polisher. But it's got a much larger polishing head on it. And this is the guy. And uh, I've already redone this piece here, so that's coming up much better. So, yeah, I'm just, uh, just finding this is working so much better to give it a much better finish, so. trying to make sure that I keep moving it around. Uh, you don't want to stay too long in one place because you don't want to burn the paint. So yeah, that's, uh, that's come up pretty good. Can't complain about that, so I'll uh, switch over to the other side. All right, so yep, yeah, all, uh, all the runs are now dealt with. It all uh, looks pretty good. So now I'm happy with that. And uh, yep, yeah, still got uh, Freddie Spencer's signature all intact. So yeah, that's uh, that should do it. I think uh, the only thing left to do now is I got to put the uh, the hose back on the breather, and then there's a couple of uh, filters and whatnot to on the petcock. But uh, aside from that, it looks like uh, this is ready to go back home. So thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. And we'll see you in the next video. Take care.